Welcome everyone. I'm Tim, as you probably know by now, and I'm the founder of the Health Optimization Summit, also known as the UK's leading biohacker. Where that came from, I don't know, but I like it. So today we're joined with Dr. Michael Cusera, who is a medical doctor and the world's leading authority in mitochondrial and anti-aging medicine. Dr. Kisera has dedicated his life to improving and restoring the state of health in an organism, i.e. humans. He is interested in improving the function of the autonomic nervous system that you probably heard so much about on my Instagram, and in order to maintain the ideal environment to improve your capacity to respond and adapt to stress. stress sorry. Welcome, Dr. Kisera. Yes, welcome. I, I am very glad that I can visit this meeting and to recognize that somebody has interest in my work, mm. uh, which I am doing already around more than 50, 30 years. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we start we started with with uh, concentration to mitochondria to to energy production. Mm -hmm. uh, to get you united with aging processes, yes. And uh, we recognize through our research that we are starting to be older already in very young age, when, when we are very young. So our, our research was showing that first signs of aging uh, with declining energy production started between 28 to 30 years of age. Mm -hmm. So it means that that if we want to improve the uh, to to improve the uh, or oh, oh, uh, slowing down to slow down uh, aging process, we need to concentrate to the to very young people. Mm -hmm. So, and, yes. well, um, you've been talking about mitochondrial health and mitochondrial yes, yes. therapy for 30 years or so. I mean, obviously, it's become popular in the last four or five years. I mean, more mainstream, should I say. Um, and I think they've been picking up your work that you've been doing for quite a long time. Obviously, there's quite a few books coming out, uh, come out about it as well. So it's really nice. I guess it must be really nice for you to uh, to have some of your work go so much more mainstream and be so much have so much more awareness around it. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is something interesting because, uh, of course, I am informed and I know that too many books and and uh, studies about mitochondria is written. But the problem is that it is much more theory than practical mm -hmm. use. Or <laughs> yes, yeah. theoretical we know everything, mm -hmm. and it was also our our big. Uh, goal and a uh, 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 big problem to find out the way how to optimize mitochondrial function because we cannot uh, use something as as doping yes we need mm. only to optimize and to slow down the deterioration of energy production it means the capability of energy production by every mitochondria, and mm -hmm. this is this is this is something what is what is uh, a little bit less uh, intensive research is done in this field. Yes, this mm -hmm. is this is something we know everything about coenzyme Q10 about uh, blah blah too many too many theories and so on, uh, but in biological systems it's working. Coenzyme Q10 in the in the fact is not much working because mm -hmm. our our first studies on in vitro it was true uh, in vitro the coenzyme Q10 is optimizing energy production mm -hmm. but what about the sum of mitochondria what about the the prevention of deterioration of of damages on mitochondria mm -hmm. and generally why why uh, the the energy cellular energy is is reducing is, is going down uh, it's not only 
only uh, capability of some of mitochondria, but also the capability of each, every one mitochondria. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, after around five years of research, we recognize that this is not only the, the supplementation, but there is necessary also to keep enzymes which are which are responsible for normal function of the mitochondria are also deteriorating and they are losing efficiency like catalyzers of the process of oxidative phosphorylation. Mm -hmm. And this was the problem, how to keep the enzymes which mm -hmm. are protein structures, how, how to protect enzyme from damage because when the protein is losing the structure is also losing the function hmm. well let's just let's just jump into quickly like do you want to give us a pre brief introduction about mitochondrial medicine specific specifically and like and how you got interested in the field in the first time in the first place in first place we of course try to find a mix of uh, supplements which are directly improving the, uh, the mitochondrial function, optimizing the function, and keeping protein structures intact mm. in, in the fact. And this is, this is something very important that we, we need to use also the, uh, the substance responsible for prevention of uh, protein structure damages mm. and prevention of or eventually repair of already damaged protein structures. Mm -hmm. So it is not only the question of production of energy, but also, also the substances which are participating in normal energy production. Mm -hmm. And it is, that is why we introduced after five, seven years of our our research, we introduced also to our supplementation carnosine, mm, mm. which is today also very, very frequent uh, substance. But uh, with uh, introduction of carnosine, we recognize much more problems than without carnosine, <laughs> because it was problem how to get carnosine into the cell because it's intracellular. Uh, substance and how to keep carnosine functional this mm. is also something what is what is good to know because also carnosine is antioxidant so it means that function of carnosine is multipotent yes it's not only this but but uh, the main why the main reason why we introduce carnosine to our supplementation is to, to keep protein structure, especially enzymes, uh, 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 intact and fully functional. Mm. So, but the problem was that in vitro was, was very effective. Mm. In vitro, it was functioning very well. The problem begins with, with living uh, organisms, with, with uh, animals, because after that, we recognize that it is necessary to give very, very high doses of carnosine mm. to reach the, the efficiency. Mm. Uh, it, was, it was unbelievable how much we need to give around 300 to 500 milligrams of carnosine per kilogram of weight. Wow. <laughs> and unfortunately, this was the biggest problem was that the eff effect of this big dose lasted only about two hours, up to two hours. So if we, we wanted to, to keep uh, carnosine supply, we need to give every two hours, 300 to 500 milligrams per kilogram of weight. So it was absolutely impossible also for the so tell, well, just to jump in like so tell us for, for the guys that are watching like what is carnosine where does it usually come from and what does it actually do to to the cell carnosine is very 
simple substance and it is dipeptide mm -hmm. is is from two amino acids it's alanine and histidine nothing else it's very easy substance but it's unbelievable effective like many other dipeptides but this dipeptide and uh, the knowledge about carnosine is already around 110 years old so carnosine is known it's from professor gulevich from russia he recognized and detect and described carnosine and also its function mm -hmm. function is very very complex yes but it is intracellular so it means it is not possible to bring from outside the cell because the cells are producing from these two amino acids are producing uh, carnosine for itself for the cell own mm. and this is the problem that is why carnosine is not possible to detect in blood yes normally mm. more it should be in some occasions uh, uh, toxic because uh, carnosine is uh, uh, one one very rare uh, genetic disease is car uh, inborn carnosinemia where the uh, missing uh, one of the enzymes working with carnosine is missing uh, after the, after that carnosine is collecting in the in the tissues and in the blood and very easy leading to death so it means that we need to be very careful with this and uh, that is why we need to find out the transport system because natural transport is not existing and and peroral normal peroral uh, uh, application of carnosine uh, in, in intestine, carnosine is, is divided to, to amino acids and in complex as dipeptide is not resorbed to the blood. There is only alanine and histidine, amino acids. Mm -hmm. So, but we need to bring, so that is why we, it, 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 it takes around 15 years of, of research and be labeled fails and, uh, and experiments and, uh, and uh, and successes which were after that again failed <laughs> hmm. so well, after I... that we uh, we uh, came out with something what is possible to use and it was very special technological preparation of carnosine hmm. and very special mix with other supplements uh, uh, in one capsule hmm which were very, very carefully uh, uh, chosen due to the activity, antioxidant activity, for instance, due to the special flavonoid complexes and so on. So after that resulting after 15 years resulted in some product having around eight to 12 hours hmm. uh, efficiency. Yeah and it's possible to give only twice daily and more not necessary to with these high dosages yes this is yeah uh, yeah so just to just to take it back a step is just, just i just want to explain yes, to the guys yes, that, that are they're watching this because it's it's quite technical and detailed in terms of carnosine and, and yeah. obviously carnosine is um, a key piece within mitochondrial health which is is one thing now what um how do we test for mitochondrial health or um what is mitochondrial therapy guided by i mean i know obviously heart rate variability is one of the key measures that you guys uh do to see for heart health and mitochondrial health so do you want to tell me just quickly how how heart rate variability fits together and what carnosine does to that exactly because i think i think it's clear that carnosine generally isn't bio let's say bioavailable um in terms of the yeah, amount yeah. We, the, the amount that we need for the period that we need to give us better mitochondrial health the one that you guys have worked on and developed lasts for a lot longer meaning you only need to take it twice a day but yeah. that, and that's great being able to supplement it with twice a day but how does that ha affect heart rate variability in mitochondrial health like what's the app what's the what's the measure and the output from it yes this this software 
of our heart rate variability analysis mm -hmm. is uh, is software which is detecting the the activity of hypothalamus pituitary, pituitary axis of the uh, cardiovascular sympathetic center mm -hmm. and autonomic nervous system it means the lowest part of autonomic regulation so it means parasympathetic and sympathetic part of ans and this is something we can we can see, we can detect uh, now we are going from cellular level to systemic level yes uh, uh, th this is necessary to say that mitochondrial medicine has two levels mm. one level is level of of cellular level so it means cellular efficiency we can say yeah. or capability and level of control of the body of of body systems and this is very important mm. because uh uh, Professor Bajewski, which developed uh, with, with uh, this, this uh, uh, software and the system, uh, I was participating on development of, the, of this software, is showing something what is not possible to detect with any other uh, uh, tests. It means it, it, it can show so-called pre-nosological diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So it means before symptoms are detected. Mm -hmm. And the principle is that we can detect how efficient and how capable is control of hormonal system, immune system, energy metabolic system, cardiovascular system, digestive system, pH is controlled by HPA axis, hypothalamus pituitary axis, pH, uh, distribution of minerals, yes, calcium and so on. It means this hypothalamus pituitary axis is taking information from indicators in the, uh, and signaling molecules about the state of something, state of pH, of blood pressure, of oxygenation, of movement of, of uh, so it, we can speak here, one hour so all the processes are under control and hpa system is responsible to control and regulate mistakes which are normally occurring by every movement every every process every 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 uh, biochemical process so it means that this system is also responsible to repair already developing damages to activate immune system, to deactivate immune system when it's not necessary to yeah. be activated and so on, so on. And all, the, so it means very important since we can see the weaknesses of control in energy, in hormonal uh, yeah. system, and so on. So just to jump in, so what, so just for those that aren't familiar, HRV or heart rate variability, could you explain exactly what that is for our listeners? Because heart rate variability is a really good indicator for how the body is working and healing, like you just say, yeah. what is heart rate variability and what is the test that you do specifically for it? We are testing the state of, of, how the body is controlled and how it's regulated. Mm -hmm. So it means that we can see the, we, for instance, uh, we can see weak energy production. Mm -hmm. Energy production is, is uh, uh, product, uh, efficiency of mitochondria. So we don't know, of course, where the mitochondria are, are mm -hmm badly working or damaged we cannot see by hrv but generally we can see that the control is weak mm -hmm. the same it is with hormonal immune system and so on mm -hmm. and we can see also cardiovascular system activity responsible for blood distribution it means mm -hmm. the distribution of nutrition and mainly mm -hmm. oxygen so so basically i mean 
just to put it into very simple terms, because this is very complicated, I think, for, for some of the, the less detailed people that aren't necessarily biohackers at this stage, is like heart rate variability is measuring the distance and fluctuation in your heart rates between beats. Is that? Yes, yes, you? exactly. And, yes. and so by judging how rested the heart rate is from the distance between those beats and the fluctuations tells you how relaxed or stressed yes. the body is. So for instance, if you are super high in cortisol and super stressed, for instance, you have, let's just say, you know, someone running after you yeah. for some reason, your heart will be beating very, very fast, uh, very, but very- But fast. not only. Yeah. It will be very fast, but the variability will be will be lower mm. yeah so yes. low variability yeah. so and low variability means higher symp generally sympathetic activity with all the hormones participating in substance and on the other hand high variability is mainly parasympathetic it means anabolic it means relaxing repairing yeah. Uh, 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 building yeah, so, energy reserves and so on. Yeah, so for instance, um, a, a rough indicator, but not the most accurate, is the aura ring, obviously. And when I find that I'm most rested, when I've meditated before bed, when I haven't watched a movie that's stimulating, when I don't have EMF around me in the home and all these things, my resting heart rate will be significantly lower, probably 10 to 15 beats lower a minute. And my heart rate variability is often two to three times higher, sh showing that the distance between the beats and the variability of that means yeah. that I'm more uh, parasympathetic, i.e. less stressed. And the test that you guys uh, do um, with mitochondrial therapy is to test the heart um, and... Uh, and heart rate variability specifically to see how stressed and how impactful that yeah. means your mitochondria are in terms of healing exactly. and recovery yeah. thing. So, so then just to, to fit it together again for people listening to this is that carnosine and the correct form of carnosine uh, administered in the right times throughout the day yeah. actually helps your heart rate variability and your mitochondrial health, should I say, Exactly. helping you to be more into a relaxed state and recover and repair better. So, yeah. so therefore, again, simplifying it again, because this is what I'm just taking from our conversation is that um, the more stressed you are, the faster your heart rate is and the lower your heart rate variability is. Absolutely. Meaning the less recovered or the, le the less you heal and repair um, yeah. versus optimizing, taking the right supplements such as um carnosine being more relaxed having yeah. a higher heart rate variability often a lower heart rate exactly recovered exactly. that also means that you're stressed less and it means that your mitochondria are doing their work to repair your body so that you have less sickness would that be a good um, absolutely absolutely maybe yeah. i am not e explaining it uh, exactly for good understanding mm. uh, we have also one uh, parameter which is stress index and it is quantification of the stress mm -hmm. and, th and this is necessary to see also uh, uh, the stress under our definition and our definition of stress is that stress is every individual individual reaction to any change sudden change of outer or inner environment mm. and from it and when it's not this situation followed by adaptation capability of the body mm. so mm. after the stress is beginning to be chronic mm. which can result in in almost of all diseases yes because mm -hmm. stress is preventing uh, regeneration uh, uh, deactivating immune system so opening door for cancer allergies autoimmune diseases and so on mm -hmm. and so it means that this is 
This is very important that with carnosine complex and with, with improving the balance between, between sympathetic, parasympathetic system, catabolic, anabolic re reactions and, and improving adaptation capabilities, mm -hmm. we changing the st stress because without stress, we cannot live. We mm -hmm. are living permanently in yeah. stress. Also, I don't know, sun eruptions, uh, go magnetic changes, what we cannot see, but they are. Yeah, and, yeah. It's, and they are stressful. Mm -hmm. So it means that uh, adaptation capability is the most important process to reach good health. Mm. So just to jump in a sec, so just thing I want to define or should I say just uh, solidify in my mind is that you, you touched on the carnosine specifically in terms of normal carnosine. Um, it, it's, it's utilized in the body too fast and um, you can't get high enough doses of it uh, throughout the day without taking lot, big doses many times. So, so that... So I just want to be clear that the carnosine complex that you guys do yeah. generally lasts for up to 12 hours, roughly. So the half-life is significantly longer, meaning that you only have to take it twice a day in smaller doses. Is that, that would be the, the, the crux of it. Now, the interesting thing is, is, and this is what I really like about what you guys do and actually what, what, you'll be exhibiting at the, the conference uh, in May, doing the heart rate variability testing is measuring your heart, uh, the heart rate variability, which looks at how your body is oxygenated, looking at your heart and the cardiovascular system and whatnot, to see if your mitochondria are operating as they should do. And, Absolutely. and if they're not putting together a protocol, which in, may or may not include carnosine, to help with your mitochondrial health, therefore helping your body re repair better when you sleep or throughout the day. Is that, would that be a good, yes. uh, good way? So, so when I, when I had my heart rate variability testing, this was done about, mm, oh, I was going to say about. On, only one notice. Yeah. Function of carnosine inside the cell is depending also on, on energy produced by mitochondria. Mm -hmm. So it is a, it is a, we can say they are twins. <laughs> Carnosine is absolutely necessary for normal function of uh, complex of enzyme participating in mitochondria. Mm -hmm. And back mitochondria is give, giving carnosine energy to, to do the job. Mm -hmm. yes? yes. So that is why we, in our carnosine complex is also some quantity of coenzyme Q10, yes, to be sure that we shall support also mitochondrial function, yeah. not only carnosine function, yeah? Um, okay. So you see, so I mean, at the, at the conference, obviously you'll be able to test people that are walking around. So they, again, I think it's good that we're discussing this now because we, we send it out to everyone so that when they are at the show walking around and they can get their heart rate variability tested, what you can then do is, um, have the supplementation or your lifestyle changes done and then have it remeasured maybe at the next conference or, and I, I think you guys actually have um, people come to various cities that yeah. they do testing throughout the year anyway. So, and I think this is what's so brilliant about biohacking and why biohacking has evolved so quickly is because of the, the quantification or the measurement of it. It's showing, hey, your heart rate variability is not great here. Um, and you need to do work on it. Here's the supplement protocol and lifestyle changes. Let's remeasure it and look at your heart rate variability, your heart health, your cardiovascular system, and look at how much you've improved in you know three, six months or whatever. And I, th I think that's one thing that when I first spoke to uh, Sherry over on, on for your team, um, is some of the success, success stories that you guys have had. So it'd be really nice actually just to to hear some of the, I guess, success stories of what you've had from having this protocol. Yeah, uh, uh, to the efficiency of the supplementation and influence on development in HRV, I only one, one thing is good to know mm. that we recognize that this supplementation 
is uh, is developing the function in three four stages first phase of activation of the hypothalamus pituitary axis second approximately four weeks uh, another four weeks is is uh, hormonal metabolic effect mm. and development and after that is stabilization in new level of adaptation and a capability of the body control mm. so it means that minimum is three months to use it until full effect is developed and after three months it's starting to work on the body <laughs> and about the cases so what is interesting and and we can say unbelievable that we can we can very well to improve also genetic diseases one of the of the very impo- uh, interesting is that we have uh, uh, so called bart syndrome bart syndrome is is genetic disease with cardiomyopathy which is changing heart muscle to sponges mass mass immunodeficiency immunity is totally damaged muscles not developed and growth is very 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 restricted mm. and uh, around 200 300 maybe bar syndromes is living until yet in the in the world all the others uh, uh die are dying in early age yes in mm. in young age two years three years maximum mm. and i have two bart syndrome one bart syndrome is around 20 years ago i got it i got it when this boy was uh only two months old two months old the family was by the doctors informed that the the indicators of lab test and all the genetic uh, tests uh, were that uh, will be not not living more than two months and after that so to be ready for everything bad for this and we started with with uh, with this uh, supplementation directly two months old boy very so now it's 20 years living very well uh, finished now now the high school and uh, uh, and doing sports skiing <laughs> tennis absolutely amazing uh, last year was some bar syndrome conference in in USA i don't know where he was speaking about this uh, this result so it, Uh, he was the tallest because he's two meter. I don't know how 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 it is in in your measure units in mm. in the Britain, but two meters is uh, is I think pretty tall. Yeah, yes, yeah. seven and and something maybe eight, eight. <laughs> so doesn't matter. So this is one. Mm-hmm. And second is now thirteen year olds and also very well. developed all the sports and and living very well mm. so uh they are two genetic diseases mm-hmm. much more effective is the with diseases which are depending on age so it means diabetes second type hypertension uh, uh coronary uh, heart disease and so on mm-hmm. uh and really highly effective in di- diabetes mm. so around 70% or oh, i have around 10000 diabetics uh, reg- registered uh, by me they are still visiting me of course because once a year they used to go to control hrv but they are absolutely 78 there was something like that they are absolutely without diabetes they are without medication without diet they are living normal life 
of course, without developing of diabetic complications. And they are absolutely healthy without diabetes second time, the same with hypertension and so on. Mm -hmm. So many of the people, so this is, this is something what, what, is, what is really interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, so just, I mean, if you- Especially the degenerative diseases are, are so, uh, uh, arthritis and so on. This, what is, what is uh, collected with, with older age? So, I mean, I think, like, obviously, mitochondria are obviously our, our energy, our batteries, I guess. Um, and uh, for people li obviously listening in, and if your mitochondria stop working, you're 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 dead. <laughs> um, yeah, right, of course. Immediately, and I, th I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. That's how cyanide works. It literally stops your mitochondria from working. Is that correct? Again, please. A cyanide, a cyanide. I once heard that cyanide is what why people die so quickly is because it actually stops yes. the mitochondria from yes, working. Sure, sure, of course. Yeah. But it is not due to, of course, this is due to the fact that it stops oxygen supply to mitochondria because mm -hmm. there is no oxygen with cyanide. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. So, I mean, that shows you if your mitochondria die, how quickly you die, and. If your mitochondria are slow and working at 60%, you know, how much of an impact that will have on you. It's also the same, which is why when we have so little oxygen, why we can't live for very long and why breath work, breath work practice um, and whatnot really helps our health and vitality so much. One thing that I, I do a lot actually is measure air quality, uh, the level of CO2 and the level of oxygen and why I always have windows open when I sleep. And uh, yesterday I was flying back from Croatia, measuring the air quality on the plane and it was one out of 10, one out of 10 with 1700 um, um, level of carbon dioxide with very very low oxygen and yeah. now people wonder why they get jet lagged or where they why they start getting colds or flus or or the why certain viruses seem to spread on planes very easily just down to oxygenation um, and the body not having enough of it for the mitochondria to operate correctly um, so I hope that really like from and I, again, I like to explain it almost layman uh, for some of the listeners, because some people are super detailed and some people are a, a little bit more entry level. Um, but so what is one tip? If you if you, there was one tip that you could give someone um, that was interested in optimizing the mitochondria. What would it be? It will be. It must be complex. It's not possible only one tip. <laughs> okay. It, it it should be. I can say minimally two two substances. It is to add succinate because this is first step to start with oxidative phosphorylation. Mm -hmm. It's forgotten, but because everybody is 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 uh, is uh, concentrated to Q10, yes. Mm -hmm. So, so succinate, but it must be in some transport system also because succinate is is not resolved. So, bound to vitamin E, so vitamin E succinate, and coenzyme Q10. But don't forget carnosine because carnosine is able also together in uh, cooperation with mitochondria to optimize or to improve energy production also with less oxygen. Mm. So this is the very important, this is also one result of our research mm. that we can improve the, the mitochondrial uh, function also with less ox oxygen supply. And this mm. is very important. Amazing, amazing. So mm, putting the right things in place means that you can, you don't need so much oxygen but if you do have an abundance in oxygen, you're going to flourish. Yeah. And uh, interesting. Have you um, have you done much with hyperbaric oxygen? Out of interest. Of course, this is this is good method. Yeah. Very good method. 
Mm. But unfortunately, it's only temporary. Mm. You know, this is this is this is the. Of course, it's improving. Maybe two hours after, still persisting ef effect, but after that, it's disappearing. And if we cannot uh, uh, secure further improvement of mitochondrial oxygenation, we can. Mm. So after that, it is it is. Uh, of course, the level of oxygenation is improved within the process of uh, hyperbaric and uh, persisting. Mm -hmm. So, but so that is why it's necessary to 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 repeat it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's actually really interesting. I mean, yeah, another thing that I really like using actually is this is methylene blue, um, and methylene blue also plays on the way that the body deals with oxygen, which is why it. Right. Like, as a nootropic, uh, or should I say, for cognitive ability, I find that right. I, mean, I have histor historical issues with oxygenation and hyperbaric oxygen therapy works very well with me. Methylene blue works very well with me and breath work works very well. And it, it's always the same theme when it comes to my mitochondria. I don't quite deal with oxygen properly. So it's really interesting how everything that you're talking about ties in, seems to tie in with oxygenation. So, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, we we also uh, compare methylene blue with carnosine. Yeah. <laughs> on the memo on memory. Yeah. Okay. Carnosine was better. <laughs> really. <laughs> yeah, I I actually supplement with uh, with your carnosine. Actually, I have done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you you will see in three months you will see oh. much different uh, state of your body hmm. because yeah. carnosine has also direct effect, and this is not very much known. For mm. instance, it's very strong cardiotonic. Mm. Mm. Comparing with digoxin, yeah. is carnosine is three times more effective without any side effects. So heart failure mm. and carnosine, it's miracle. Mm. Yeah, it really is. It really is amazing stuff. So, I mean, so guys listening to this, what you should take from today is that your heart rate variability is an overall indicator for your mitochondrial health, which means your overall health. So if you're taking various supplements, if you're doing loads of different protocols, if you're doing hyperbaric oxygen therapy, all of this stuff, but you haven't measured your heart rate variability. And if you have, your heart rate variability is low and your heart rate is always high, then you should really keep a check on it and do stuff to optimize your mitochondria. Now, one thing that you can do is get your heart rate variability checked at the summit, which is going to be this May 28th and 29th. Yeah. Have your heart rate variability checked. And also you can pick up some of the carnosine if you need it. Uh, some people are lucky enough to not. Some of my colleagues, for instance, have heart rate variability almost five or six times the average of mine, which is very fortunate for them. But the point is, is get a test see if you need to supplement if you do supplement with the right carnosine not just any carnosine and a lot of them out there actually have nasty fillers and binders in which is one thing that i noticed when i was looking for carnosine previously so get it tested because if you don't test you guess optimize with the right carnosine and uh, obviously trial things like methylene blue or try it hyperbaric on top of these things but unless you've got the right. basis in place your mitochondria aren't going to be correct so it yeah, go for it. Just a moment. This HRV is not only to detect the state actual by measuring time, and it's also giving us information about dosages of mm -hmm. carnosine, about eventually complex with another uh, supplements, mm -hmm. and more by control checkup. We can see by follow up, we can see that the effect is is coming or not yes and we can correct dosages and so on so this is really a method which is which is uh, very significant yeah yeah i mean i think you also do um actually i've got them i don't know why i say i think you actually have um um a coq10 complex and yes. um and i think it's polyphenol a polyphenol supplement as well um and it's a, a range of three yes, this is flavonoid flavonoid yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, and so as a, a stack together, they're very good for mitochondrial health. Um, Absolutely. The guys on the stand will obviously be able to talk about them in more detail after you've had a measurement and things like that. So, so where people can find you is on, on mitochondrialtherapy.com. And, um, yeah. and obviously, if you go to forward slash introduction, then you'll find out a bit more about Dr. Kucera's details. You can look at the therapy. You can see what you can expect to see at the summit and so on and so forth. So, um, so yeah, so it's been really nice to catch up with you today, uh, Dr. Kucera. Very, very nice, actually. I think. So, I, I am so I am sorry I cannot come this this uh, day uh, for the for the congress yes no uh, I, I was looking forward but unfortunately I am so busy that mm. it was not possible but yeah. it doesn't matter maybe sometimes we shall mm. meet yeah, no, we, we're going to have one every year so uh, so obviously you're welcome to come next okay. year as well but, but yeah, so it's been lovely to catch up with you guys, all the details, the show notes and the links to the website and to find out more are obviously going to be on below this. Um, and Dr. Kucera, thank you very much for coming on today. Thank it's been you. really nice to meet you. Th thank you. Bye bye.